voices rise, all creation cries, singing out in endless hallelujah. From this moment on, join with heaven's song, singing out in endless hallelujah. So, what's your assignment? What can we learn from the Esther account? Now look at this. I've got something exciting to share with you, and this won't take long. This is this. Can everybody see that? Now I had a, a wonderful lady come in. Her name's Sue. She painted this, and she brought this in this week. Just this week. And then it was Friday. Now, here's what she asked me. I don't know if you do these things, but I had this huge stain that was right here. It's about this, this size, about the size of this microphone, the head on the microphone. It was a splotch, and she had tried everything to get this, and it was, it was, she had spent months to learn how to paint like this, and it was in the, it was almost dried, and then the, the darndest little thing happened. A moth in the middle of the night landed on it just prior to it being dried. And in that moth's wings, there was a chemical reaction that left that beautiful painting blotted with a stain. So she came in and asked me if uh, these were paintings. And of course, I, I told her, I said, no, these are actually photographs, but I actually went to school for graphic design and I actually have painted and I know a little bit about paints. And so then she's like, well, will you please, I've taken this everywhere. I've offered it and I don't care what I'll pay. I'll pay whatever you, whatever you need to get this blotch off. She's like, I have tried everything. I've tried Dawn dish soap, all these different things to try to get it off and it wouldn't be removed. So she had ordered another, um, some other photographs that she put on another canvas, and I told her, well, bring that in. So I've, I've only met her two different times, but when she brought that in, I looked at it, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, <clears throat> I know a little bit about painting and that kind of thing, but what am I going to do? I was like, what have I got myself into? I'm kind of thinking in a moment. But this is when we have to trust God. And you know, every week I pray. And listen, the reason I'm telling you this story is not to puff me up. I am nothing without Christ Jesus. But every week I pray diligently that God would bring in men and women through those doors so that I can, I can um, love them, carry their burdens when I can, that means I've got to be freed up of my own burdens to do that, by the way, because we all have to. And so here we had this situation. So her canvas came in, her photographs, and I knew I needed to call her because I told her it was roughly going to be about 10 days in turnaround time. And I had this sitting back there. And I kept over the over two or three days' time, I kept on thinking, well, what am I going to do? And I'm like, God help me. I was like, am I going to go to Michael's? My, my paints, my oils are old now. And I was, I was a little reluctant in trying to match those up with what was on there. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to go out and buy a bunch of different blues and then paint it on another canvas, watch it dry, and see if I can get it matched up in that regard? But no, you know, um, the median of canvas, you know, we're talking older cotton versus newer cotton. So it was, it was, it was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And so I went back there this past Friday, and this is God, you guys. This is awesome. This is our living God. So I go back there, and I see it, and it's got that big stain on it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at this. Somebody who had not painted before took months of training and I get to tell you the back end of that story here in a second but look at it, it's beautiful 
And I love the fact that it's a, it's a mammal that breathes air. And it's water. I'm going somewhere with that. All right, so here's, here's what's interesting. So then I saw her canvas sitting there, and um, because I want to always provide the best customer service, I thought, well, I'll call her. And before I did that, I thought, you know, I, I said a prayer. I said, Holy Spirit, I don't know exactly how to help this dear lady, but I felt, you know, I could easily just return it and said, I'm sorry, I can't do anything with it. But I ended up taking a little bit of marker back there that I have, and I started to match it up. Now, this is permanent marker. Now, who would ever think to do that, right? So I went in, just was thinking, I'll just try to just hit just a little bit. And as I did that, all of a sudden I hear ding, ding, ding. The, the door comes in, the, the, the person comes in the door, and then I hear the noise, and when I did, it's, it kind of startled me, and I put a little more down than I was supposed to, and I was like, oh my goodness. And I take, um, I take a, a paper towel, and I start trying to get it, and it wasn't coming off. I was like, oh my goodness. I think I've just made it worse. So then the person comes in, and I'm thinking, oh, I hope it's not this lady. <laughs> you know? And <clears throat> so I ended up um, telling the lady that came in here. She, she ended up giving us a little money I told you about. Remember? It was an offering that she was going to give. And she wanted to sew it into this house, and I was I was thankful. But I, I told her before I, I came out here, I said, hold on a second. I'm working on something back here that will take just a few minutes, but i got to take care of this. And she says to me, um, are you having lunch back there? <laughs> I said, no. I was like, it's something that if it dries, it's not going to be good, and I need to get to it. And because God allowed this um, Haman circumstance to happen in my life in this moment, I was in a rush because she was here and I was back there. So I just grabbed this, the anointing oil. Now I took this anointing oil back there and I thought this might lift that color I just put down. But you know what? I didn't know if it would or it wouldn't, you know, because it, it doesn't always do, do that. I didn't know, you know, I know you cut some paint with oil, but we're talking about dried blotch. So I took a little bit on the Kleenex of this healing oil, which I use many, many times, and we've prayed over. It's got power. I've heard the demonic cry out. It burns. It literally is the living God represented in this bottle. And I ended up taking it back there, and in a, in a haste, I, I was trying to, to get that out, and I just started praying the blood of Jesus like I would over anybody that was here looking for healing. And guess who needed healing? This canvas needed healing. It needed the blotch to be removed. And so I prayed and I put the, uh, the oil on it and then I came out here and we talked for 30 minutes at least. And for a second, when we got done, for a second I remembered all of a sudden where I was and what had just happened. And for a moment, just like with my own personal healing, the enemy wanted to say, oh, that blotch is going to be there. And you know what? I rebuked it in Jesus' name on the spot. I said, no, it's healed in Jesus' name. I went back there, and there you go. Healed in Jesus' name. Now, that's a real story. So I literally called her. This was Friday. I just called her, just thrilled. And I told her, that I felt like that all of this was a spirit. There was a spiritual overlay that I needed to share with her. And before I even got anything out of my mouth, she says, I need to come in. When, what are your hours? She's like, I, listen, you're the guy that I need to talk to about the gift of tongues. I, I know nowhere else to go. I have an interest in the gift of tongues. And um, I don't know of anyone else I can talk about. And I want to hear about your personal account. Um, and so I said, okay, yes. And so in that conversation, we come to find out. She says, I feel like there's a block. Boy, I tell you, when I hear that, I get excited because I, I'm like, I know what the block is. And I know who we can go to have her removed. And I started talking to her about what we have found through our tablets that you write. You know, there's, there is power more power in the pen there in the pen than there is in the sword and you write down all the, the points of unforgiveness in your life and what we found is what what usually is the block 
is unforgiveness or fear. And as soon as I said that, she goes, whoo, I just felt the spirit within me. Re that resonated within my spirit. Well, she's talking about the Holy Spirit. And she says, let me tell you. I was like, well, which one was it? She says it was unforgiveness. And I was like, well, do you mind just saying a little more? And she says, yes. She says, that painting that I brought, that I worked so hard, that I took training with, my mother loved dolphins. And I dedicated all this time to learn how to paint a dolphin for her birthday. And so then I presented it to her for her birthday, and she said, oh, they'll probably get 10 or $12 at the, uh, at the flea market. And those words that she didn't, she didn't realize how that hurt and wounded her. And yet there was unforgiveness there that came out. Because <laughs> this is so reflective. So she's getting her healing. The unforgiveness was the blotch. It was the moth that was demonic that came in in the night. It represents the darkness. It represents the unforgiveness. And the unforgiveness was had blotted this piece. You know, she didn't give that piece to her mother. It hurt her so bad. She kept it, even with the blotch, to this day. She, she had taken it everywhere, looking, couldn't find anyone to be able to lift this. But it was the power of the Holy Spirit that lifted it. And that's the power of our God. That's the assignments that are afforded us each and every week, you guys. And we have been made for a time such as this. And whoever comes in your contact or in your path, do not be robbed of the blessing. Do not remain silent. I could have, rem I could have remained silent. Uh, many times I could have remained silent. But um, silence gets you nowhere. And the enemy uses our silence. And we need to be aware of it. So anyways... Well, I just wanted to conclude that. And I just thank God for Purim. I thank God for the message. I thank God that my wife hears from God. And I listen to my wife. And I thank God for, for this whole thing. Because it's just beautiful. And that is how our God is beautiful. This represents the feast, you guys. Just like a story that's so laid out beautifully like that. It's, it's I mean, even more so with the feast. And... And you know, it's not a legalistic thing. It's not a uh, um, spirit religion that we're, that we're doing the feast. But I believe every believer who has the King of Kings and Lord of Lords within their hearts, they should be keyed in, especially in the day that we live, to understand God's calendar. And here in this house, we're going to continue. We're not perfect, as you know. I'm certainly not. But the thing is, is we are going to be dedicated in paying attention to God's calendar so that way we can forecast our king and his return. Amen. So with that, let's go ahead and, and take up our offering. Let our voices rise, all creation cries, sing out in heaven, hallelujah, from this moment on, join with heaven's soul, sing out